most of what happened to the ancient metamorphic and granite rocks between the time they formed and now has been lost. There's good evidence that for most of the last 1.4 billion years, this area was underwater, during which time it probably was covered with miles of sedimentary rock that formed as sediment accumulated from nearby continental shores. But periodically, the area either would be uplifted above sea level by tectonic forces, or the sea level would fall, exposing all the local rock to erosion. In just a few million years, the sedimentary rock disappeared. Our area was uplifted most recently during the formation of the Rockies, 65 to 75 million years ago. We've been out of the water since then, and all the sedimentary rock that might have existed here at the time of the uplift is gone. However, there is some sedimentary rock around the valley, most obviously in the head of Camelback Mountain, in Red Mountain on the nearby reservation, and in the Papago Buttes in Phoenix. This is new rock actually formed in the last 65 million years or so from the sediment that has eroded and accumulated since then. We also know that during this period, North America migrated northward from near the equator to its current location. The supercontinent Columbia, whose formation and breakup produced our foundation rocks, was replaced by a succession of later supercontinents before the most recent one, Gondwana, broke apart into the continents covering the globe today. Another source of new rock in our area was the volcanic activity that began about 25 million years ago, probably caused by the subduction of a small oceanic plate under the southwestern edge of the North American continent. There's evidence of volcanism all over the area. The superstitions and nearby Goldfield Mountains to our east were huge volcanic fields, the nearest verified volcanoes to us. Millions of years of lava flows from these fields formed the large black hills along Shea Boulevard near Fountain Hills and elsewhere around the valley. It may be puzzling that lava from volcanoes more than 20 miles away could flow, in some cases apparently uphill, to eastern Scottsdale, northern Phoenix, and other areas. But remember that 25 million years ago, the topography of the area was very different. In fact, where the lava ended up is a clue to the shape of the land at that time. In addition to lava flows, there also were periods of explosive eruptions that produced clouds of volcanic ash, like the eruptions of Mount St. Helens or Mount Pinatubo, rather than flowing lava. There's striking evidence of this volcanic history in the northern portion of the preserve. Much of Brown's Mountain about 1.5 miles north of the Browns Ranch trailhead, consists of rock from the Superstition Volcanic Field, deposited between about 15 and 25 million years ago. The bottom of the mountain is the 1.4 billion year old granite found throughout most of northern Scottsdale. But the upper portions reflect a succession of geologically recent volcanic periods. First, there's a base of basalt rock, a type of solidified lava. Above it is a layer several hundred feet thick of accumulated volcanic ash, welded into a rock called tuff. Finally, the top of the mountain has another layer of hard basalt. Each of these layers is the result of hundreds or even thousands of eruptions over millions of years, with flowing lava alternating with explosive ash eruptions. Notice 
that everything between the ancient granite at the bottom and the 25 million year old volcanic rock on top of it, almost 1.4 billion years of geologic history is gone, probably eroded away between the time of the last uplift and the beginning of the local volcanic era. The layer of hard basalt capping Browns and nearby Cone Mountain have protected the softer tuff and granite underneath from erosion, leading to the obvious cone shape of these two mountains. In effect, they're giant hoodoos, distantly related to the rock formations in the Chiricahua Mountains of southeastern Arizona. Notice how different they look from the boulder pile appearance of Choya Mountain to their east, which is a typical North Scottsdale granitic mountain. If you hike up to Brown's Mountain, there are many reddish brown to almost black basalt rocks along the trail as you near it. The color is due to minerals in the rock itself. The small holes in many of the rocks are gas bubbles that were trapped as the lava solidified. This vesicular basalt was valuable to native peoples since it provided a grinding tool whose edges never got dull. As the rock wore down, more sharp-edged vesicles were revealed at the surface.